110. And it's on page 753 in the Bible. The word of the Lord came to Jonah a second time, saying, Get up, go to Nineveh, that great city, and proclaim to it the message that I tell you. So Jonah set out and went to Nineveh, according to the word of the Lord. Now Nineveh was an exceedingly large city, a three days walk across. Jonah began to go into the city, going a day's walk, and he cried out, Forty days more, and Nineveh shall be overthrown. And the people of Nineveh believed God. They proclaimed a fast, and everyone, great and small, put on a sackcloth. When God saw what they did, what they did, how they turned from their evil ways, God changed his mind about the calamity that he had said he would bring upon them, and he did not do it. Our second reading comes from the Gospel according to the writers of Mark, chapter 1, verses 14 through 20. Do take your time if reading helps you to hear God's voice, hear the message that's there for you today. And we'll have a reading and a visual, and we'll have a video with the words also on the screen if um, you choose to follow with the words on the screen. you have arrived where you need to be, please say amen. amen. If you need some more time, raise your hand. All right. Now, after John was arrested, Jesus came to the Galilee proclaiming the good news of God and saying the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. As Jesus passed along the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and his brother Andrew casting a net into the sea. For they were fishermen. And Jesus said to them, Follow me, and I'll make you fish for people. And immediately they left their nets and followed him. As he went a little further, he saw James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John, who were in their boat, mending their nets. Immediately he called them, and they left their father Zebedee in the boat with the hired men, and followed him. Let us respond to the word with the words printed in your bulletin. And if you so feel moved, let us pray. God of new realities, close at hand. Open our ears to hear your call. Give us the insight to know that it is you who calls us. Grant us the courage to go where you send us as we journey with the risen Christ. Amen. Amen. We have two stories today, and two stories that go hand in hand with the stories we've been listening since Advent. And last Sunday we had some more stories of the call and how God has been calling a lot of odd people and people that were not very highly regarded in the society, uh, marginals or misfits or uh, 
F students, not the A students. And how God has been calling people that thought they were not that important to be called. Not that they didn't have so much to give from a child, Samuel, to an older, older widow. And so many other stories of the calling. And today we have Jonah, a very familiar story to most of us. As a matter of fact, when I sent a text to Edie last night, I included uh, a few other people in it and said, anybody <laughs> interested in reading? Uh, Corky can make it. Um, it's Jonah, and I immediately got a text back. Uh, is it about him being a fish? <laughs> like, no, 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 this is the part after he was spit out. Um, so it's a popular story of a calling because Jonah was called and he immediately said, no way, I am not doing this. And as a matter of fact, I'm not just saying no to you, God, I'm going to run away from you. And you all know the story, so I'm not going to get into it very much. But we have the story of Jonah with a lot of hesitance and God keep calling him. And we have the story of the disciples today, the fishermen, fishermen that were also marginalized because what did they do? They, you know, spend their days mending nets or in the middle of the, the water there dealing with smelly, unclean things, right? Not highly educated, not very powerful, but Jesus saw them, called them, and immediately they answered. Immediately they followed him. So God seeks to include us, all of us, no matter how marginal you may think you are. God includes us in what God is doing in the world. And I like for us to sit with this statement for a couple of breaths. God includes us in what God is doing in the world. And as I have been doing, I've been uh, doing pop quizzes <laughs> of sorts. I've been bringing things and asking people to answer and read them. Edna has done it, Edie has done it. Uh, today, you have an insert in your bulletin, printed in very large font, uh, so no excuses. It's double spaced. And I, I wanted to encourage a practice uh, that was taught to me at seminary in chapel. Um, people were encouraged to speak and participate in the service without even being officially asked or called on, but by whomever was leading the worship. But to do it so by the movement of the Spirit. So, as we have a, a common practice of a leader reads something, and then whatever is bolded and italicized is the church's response, right? But I want you to look at this insert. You will see that there's P for people, and it's bolded, and it's italicized double-spaced, 16 or 14, I think 16, uh, point font there. I want to read it, not necessarily with the whole congregation, I want you to read what you feel moved to read. From wherever you are, you don't need to come forward. But I want you to preach with me. 
And if we have more than one person reading that, that's great. If we have just one person reading that, that's great. And I hope we have at least one person reading the bolded, italicized. But I don't want you to read out of obligation because it's printed and it's right there in front of you. I want you to read as you feel moved to read. And if you don't feel moved to read, it is fine. Did that make sense? Does that sound like a good plan for us to go? Yes? All right. I'll start and we'll see where we go. Jesus is calling you to follow him. We really like to. We have too much to do right now. Check back later, okay? Yes. Jesus is sees your labors and knows your gifts. Jesus is ready for you to come. Deep gratitude to all who felt led to lead us, all who answered the call. As we have practiced, we see in this text we're reflecting on today that first, God uses us as we are. So God is coming to the shore and calling those fishermen not to be something else. Jesus calls them to be who they are, to do what they have been prepared to do. There is a twist. He mentions, I want you to be fisher of people slightly different than fish. But Jesus puts it this way so they will understand that they already have and have been prepared to do what Jesus is calling them to do. Jonah resisted quite a bit. However, Jesus didn't call only Jonah, but he called all the people that walked with Jonah. So Jonah would figure his stuff out. And also, the answer to God's call didn't only rely on Jonah, because in order for God's call to be heard, practiced, and fulfilled, the people of Nineveh needed to answer as well. So God calls us and doesn't ask us to be somebody else. Indeed, as we answer the call, we'll be transformed and we will learn new things and we'll do new things. But we don't have 
to be somebody else. Because the call that is placed on, a, on your life is a very particular call. Not everybody is called to be a pastor. Not everybody is called to be a musician. Not everybody is called to be a teacher, to be a plumber, to be a DJ. We have our particular gifts. And God's call are very, very pertinent to the skills we already have. And the stories of calling, we have two important aspects. One is that God uses us as we are on the spot. We don't have to become something else on that very spot. We will as we answer the call. And secondly, we're not called alone. I can't be a pastor alone. A teacher cannot be a teacher without students. A plumber cannot be a plumber without somebody with a burst pipe. So we are called as a community. We're not called alone. Especially when the calling is so scary, is so frightening. Or the calling is a bit unclear to us. As we reflected last Sunday, we have to seek community and clarity through our relationship with one another. Samuel saw clarity, support and assistance in his calling through Prophet Eli. He helped him. And now we are called to help each other discern what God is calling us to do. Now, what, what does this calling thing is? And how can we possibly help each other figure out what this calling thing is? How can we use our abilities for the sake of others, with no expectations or desire for gain, reciprocation, or reward. Because when we use our skills and our abilities without those expectations, it might be a strong indicator that you are not just doing something to get your paycheck, or to get the recognition, or the reward, or to gain somebody's appreciation. But you're doing something because God has called you to do it, because you're not getting anything from it. Frederick Buchner once said, the place God calls you to is the place where your deep gladness and the world's deep hunger meet. I'll read it again. The place God calls you to is the place where your deepest gladness, the place where you feel most happy, and the world's deep hunger meet. It's a beautiful quote, a quote that is repeated oftentimes, especially in seminary. As a matter of fact, this week, one of the calls we have identified as a church is to keep the Unity House building as a ministry. We met this week with churches around the neighborhood with churches we had partnered when this ministry first started over 10 years ago. And lo and behold, two of my friends from seminary are part of this team. One started, um, was called to serve the Episcopal Church, St. Andrews, right downtown. And the other one works with IRIS, which is the refugee immigration uh, organization that we have been partnered for many years. And in conversation with her this week, she 
brought that up. She brought that quote up. And it's so pertinent to the stories today because Jesus is calling those fishermen and Jonah was called not to climb up a cross and be crucified or to be used or abused, but they were called to find their gladness, what made them happy to do. Because if they were doing what they were being trained to do for so long and prepared to do for so long, they would find a need in the world. And meeting that need with your gladness is God's will for us. It's not going to be all roses and smiles and cupcakes and balloons. It will sometimes be hard and during adult conversation today, Jimmy King asked me, well, uh, how is it for you with your calling? And I, I answer, well, sometimes I wonder and when things get really tough, I wonder if my life as an architect would have been better now if I, you know, having those weekends and the ability to have vacations. <laughs> and then I confess that even though those moments do come, when I do reflect and I stop and think, My gladness is in doing what I'm doing today. My joy comes in doing what I'm doing today. And it works because somehow I am told that there was a need for me to do what I was doing. So I ask you this morning to remember those times when people came to you and said, thank you for doing what you did because there was a need and you met it. Thank you for shoving, shoving the snow. Thank you for planning those meetings. Thank you for baking those cookies. Thank you for taking care of my child. Thank you for taking care of this or that. Thank you for walking with me. Thank you for listening to me. And this is not just the things that I might have heard in the past, but things that I'm sure you have heard. So if you ever wonder about your calling, think about those moments when there was a need in the world and you helped meet that need. You were God's hands, God's arms, God's voice in the world. And in doing so, you felt glad. John van der Laar points out that the disciples ended up being a really diverse and difficult bunch. <laughs> so this comes to the collective aspect of our calling. Because as we identify a bigger need in the world that we can meet by ourselves, we find partners, other fishermen, fisherwomen, to go and feed the world. Let us remember that God called a diverse group of people. So as you serve and answer your call, sometimes you'll be serving with people you don't agree. Sometimes you're going to be serving with people that do not hear you, do not appreciate you, may not want to play nicely, are difficult. But that's the calling we have. The call to serve with a diverse community. Because if everybody is a plumber, if something happens to the light bulbs, we'll be working in the dark. And if everybody is a cook, but we have no nurses, if our tummy aches, <laughs> not from hunger, but from some other pain. We don't have a nurse among us. How can we do this together? So this morning, I ask you to reflect on your individual call. Where 
what you do and makes you feel happy meets a need in the world. And I ask you to reflect on how we can, as a church, bring our skills together, our gifts together, to transform our church, our communities. Because friends, if we don't do it, who is going to do it? And I don't know about you, but every time I felt God's presence and God's answers to my prayers, those prayers were answered through somebody. Somebody that felt a joy in doing something, sharing the gifts and their skills. And that was to me God's answers. Please pray with me. Though we may take our best energy and our most enduring commitment, we pray for the courage and the faith to answer your call, to resist whatever devils we may face, and to pass your abundant life. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. amen.